like Adesanya Pereira. Mm-hmm. Israel said after the fight, he's like, "You fucked my leg up. My leg was." Yeah, you useless. watch it in the replay. Yeah. I didn't notice it even because I was upstairs watching it. Mm-hmm. And then when they started showing the highlights later on, I was like, "Well, he like went down from the one check too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he checked it really weird." And well, he kind of like got tripped kicked. over his foot yeah. and then went down. So we said, "Oh, he just stumbled," but it was really because his leg wasn't working well anymore. already. Yeah, yeah. It was the first round. I went and I've watched that fight several times, and uh, apparently so has. Uh, Alex Pereira yeah. made, made Glover watch it every oh, time he really? comes over. He put, apparently he puts it on. Yeah. Um, I yeah, watched yeah. it again, and it's that first round. That first round, he fucking really chops at it. He's got a very strange style. It's very uniquely Pereira. His yeah, the stand up style. It's very different. Like his hands, he stands like this. He's just freakishly long yeah. and big for that weight class. And his power is preposterous. You can t- you ever see some of those guys? Like when you look at certain skinny guys, and I'm not calling him, he's not like skinny, he's lean, but he's lean and you, tall and lean. Those guys are the guys I worry about mm. because it's those guys that hit freakishly hard. That it's the, the big muscle guys. You know that guy's going to hit you hard, but it's these sneaky tall lean guys. Those Tommy man. Hearns looking yeah, dudes. Yeah, and they yeah. just they when mm-hmm. they turn into those hooks, his mm-hmm. left hook, so much torque and leverage. His fucking left hook is a thing of beauty, man. It yeah. really is. I mean, his uh, everything is fucking sick. Scary dude. He's such a scary guy. And the high-level kickboxing experience that he has, like coming over from glory. I'm, you know, I'm very interested to see what Israel does different in the mm-hmm. second fight, but I'm really interested in seeing him against someone who can wrestle. That's what I'm that, really interested in. I was just going to say, it's kind of working out perfectly for Alex where... You get another, you get another shot. Yeah, you know, you you get to go and face Israel again. That's the best matchup for you. You got a guy that is mm-hmm. probably going to stand with you mm-hmm. for as long as the fight lasts. Yeah, when he's really going to get challenged is when he has somebody that's going to say that Marvin Vittori. I'm yeah, yeah I'm going to grapple your ass. Yeah. I'm going to pressure you up against the fence. Mm-hmm. And for guys like Vittori, it's got to be like, all right, they want him to stay the champ. Yeah, because Izzy already had their number, and he's been there, but. As long as Pereira's in there, another kickboxer, but with a different style, maybe not as much experience in the grappling department, they're chomping at the bit to get in there. Well, not, not chomping at the bit they are. He's yeah. fucking scary. Robert Whitaker, you know, Whitaker's very well-rounded. He's, yeah. he's an interesting matchup for him. There's, there's very good matchups in that 185-pound division, but in my opinion, what's interesting is he's a specialist. He's like a pure specialist. Yeah. I mean... He's he can grapple a little bit, but that's not what he wants to do. He wants to knock your fucking head into the bleachers. Yeah, and you know it going yeah. in. You yeah. know that's what he wants to do to you. He just trying to. I mean, Izzy was winning that fight, and mm-hmm. he still got him out of there. Yep, well, I couldn't believe it. I remember even saying to the people when we were watching it up in the ESPN desk, we're like, man, could you imagine if he pulls it off here in the end? And he fucking did it. Yeah, he did it. But Izzy was probably ahead three. Well, what? How many rounds do you think he was ahead going into that fifth round? That was the fifth, and I think even that round was was that who I don't I don't remember now. Well, Izzy definitely won the first and almost knocked him out. I think he had probably two or three rounds. Yeah, it's hard hard to say. I'd have to go back and try to score it, which I'm terrible at, man. People are always like, yeah. "What did you think?" I'm like, "I'm calling the fight." Yeah, you can't call it's and not score the at the same time. They don't get it. When you're scoring a fight, you should shut oh, your mouth. Okay, here we go. So uh, Izzy had three rounds on Eric Cohen's card. On Sal Diamata's card, he had uh, three rounds. And he also had Everybody. three rounds yeah. on Mike Bell's. Yeah, so he all had All the that. same, too. All he had to do was move around. Yep. All and he not, had to do was not move get around. caught. Not get caught, and he wins that fight. Wow. I'm very interested in the rematch. Very interested. Because you got to think, Izzy almost had him out in the first round, man. He almost had him out. If he can avoid getting that leg compromised like he did in the first round of that fight, and so he's got his movement, and he also had some great moments grappling, which surprised a lot of people. Yeah. When he had Pajero's well, back. And, there's a time that you're going to pull yeah. out some grappling. Yeah. It's in that matchup. That's what that did. And he's been at it longer yeah. than Pajero. So it's like that's the yeah. time to show, and he did. 
both guys did. Both guys, I think, scored takedowns at yep. one point or another in that fight. I remember being like, oh, now they're now they're wrestlers in here. You, know, yeah. you get two guys that know they can knock the crap out of each other, and suddenly everybody knows how to do a little bit of wrestling. Well, just, you know, mixing it up, just keeping someone guessing, overload, overload their brain. Yeah, 25 minutes yeah. of avoiding that left hook. Ooh. Scary proposition. It's everything, man. Everything he hits you with is hard. That's what I'm talking about, those lean guys like yeah. that. You know those shins hurt. Mm-hmm. You know if he lands an elbow on you. Same as Izzy. Mm-hmm. They're similar build, on, yeah. but Alex well, has more muscle bit, on him. He's quite a bit bigger. I mean, I think Pajeda, when he actually weighed into the fight, was above 220. Yeah. When he was inside the octagon for the fight, was above 220. Whereas, you got to remember, when Izzy fought Jan Bohovic for the light heavyweight title, he was only 194. Yeah. I mean, Izzy is... Izzy's one of those guys that... He's not cutting that much weight. He's not cutting any weight. And even when he wanted to go up to light heavyweight, he's like, I'm not cutting any weight. I'm no. going to fight as I fight. Which makes sense. you know, Especially if you're not planning on making that transition permanently, mm-hmm. you don't want to go and add on all that size. And the other right. thing that drives me nuts about when I hear these fighters, and I think it's really the strength and conditioning coaches feeding bullshit more than it is the fighters. They're just listening to what they're being told. But you don't put on 20 pounds of muscle in a month. You ever hear these guys in fighter meetings? We'll be talking to them and be like, well, you know, I put on about 10 pounds of lean muscle mass for this camp. I'm like, this particular camp, in six you've weeks, put on 10 pounds. 10 pounds of muscle mass. How are you going to pass your piss test? <laughs> what, do you, um, uh, what supplements right. are you taking for that? <laughs> Hair quotes. Hair yeah. quotes, supplements. Get the yeah. fuck out. You didn't put on 10 pounds of muscle. Yeah, that's a lot You're of out weight. of your mind. Yeah. Yeah, you probably gained some water weight. It's also, it's like. You got stronger. What kind of scanning are they doing of their body composition before they say these things? Are it's they the doing... coach doing the eyeball scan saying that you put on 10 pounds of muscle for this one. Well, you know, I always go back to the Roy Jones Jr. Um, uh, Ruiz fight. When he fought John Ruiz, he went up to heavyweight, remember? And yeah. he got very muscular. He was real big. He was about, I mean, he wasn't too heavy for a heavyweight. I, I want to say Roy weighed like 200 pounds, just a little over 200 pounds maybe. See what he, what he weighed for that John Ruiz fight. Did it say? 193. Oh, was it really? That's all he weighed? Well, the heavyweight for bo- what, what the that heavyweight says that, for boxing is different, that's right? I think that's now. They're saying now he weighs 193. <clears throat> what did he weigh when he fought John Ruiz? It just, uh, does it say there? No, he said he weighed 193, and Ruiz was 226. Oh, was 226 yeah. Interesting. But, you know. Roy was so fucking talented. But when Roy went down in weight and then fought Tarver in his next fight, he looked deflated. Yeah. He looked like he had just really drained himself to make that weight cut. Yeah, that's why you see these guys yeah. drop down, man. It's... Looked terrible and then got knocked 